In problem four, we're given an assumed form of the economy's long-run production function, which is real GDP equals technology times the square root of the value of capital, the value of resources, and the size of the labor force, or the number of laborers in the economy. Over the long run, the total value of the economy's physical capital, the total value of the economy's natural resources, the level of knowledge known in the economy, technology, and the size of its labor force vary. In the short run, however, the above parameters are fixed. Capital equals $0.401 trillion. Resources equals $2.453 trillion. Technology is 1.226%. And the size of the labor force is 144.355 million workers. We're going to use three decimal places for all the answers below, unless otherwise noted. The short production function graphs real GDP over the number of laborers, and it is given down here. So we have to plug in values for Z, K, and R to get the short production function. If you go to my website, halstar.com, and click on teaching, and then scroll down to MBA 620, you'll see there is a simulation called Production Function and Long Run Average Supply. You're going to click on that. When you click on that, this opens up. The level of capital, according to the assumed values, is $0.401 trillion. Resources equals $2.453 trillion. Technology is 1.226% of all the knowledge that is available in the universe. The labor force is 144.355 million workers. So the short production function it results when this times that are entered into this equation. The square root of those two, the product of those two numbers is taken, and that square root is multiplied by z, the level of technology. So we're going to copy this into Cengage now, right here. But we only need three decimal places, so the third decimal place is a five, the next one's a nine, so that five becomes a six. And the graph of this equation is down here. We'll put real GDP up here and the number of laborers down here. Now we're going to substitute the labor force, LF, in the short run production function. So if we take this number here, plug it into this equation, we take the square root of LF, take the square root of 144.355, and then we'll multiply that by 1.216, we get the level of potential output of this economy, which is $14.609 trillion. Now, where did the $14.609 come from? We take the square root of the labor force and then multiply it by this value over here. And we copy this into Cengage now. So potential output is $14.609 trillion. If we want to plot that in this diagram up here, 144.355 million workers is right about here. We go straight up till we get to the production function. And that value is 14.609, right about there. So on a piece of paper, we'd put a dot right here. And that dot would correspond to the full employment of this economy. Now, if 9.002 million workers are frictionally or structurally unemployed, the number of naturally unemployed workers is 9.002 million. And the natural unemployment rate is the ratio of this 9.002, which is the value in F10, over L3, which is the size of the labor force. So the natural rate of unemployment is the number that are naturally unemployed, frictionally or structurally, 
divided by the labor force. So we're going to copy this value into Singage now. In part C, we assume the employment level equals 128.769 million people. We're going to copy that value into Excel. The employment level is 128.769. Since some unemployment is beneficial to the economy, the effective number of laborers will be defined as L equal to employment level plus those in the labor force who are naturally unemployed. Substituting this value into the short production function gives real GDP. So the effective labor force down here is the number of people that are employed plus those who are naturally unemployed or those who are structurally or officially unemployed. When I plug this value into the short production function, I got to take the square root of it and multiply it by this value, which I do over here. So I take the square root of the effective number of laborers in the economy take the square root of that, and then I multiply it by this coefficient here. And I get a real GDP level of 14.2722. I'm going to copy that here. Again, I only need two decimal places, or three decimal places, so the fourth decimal place is a one, so I can delete that part. The number of laborers to three decimal places is 137.771 million workers. Now I want to plot this on the graph in part A. So 137, basically 138, and 14.3. So 138 is right about here, and you go up until you get to the real GDP level. And real GDP is less than potential. Potential was 14.6, right? The labor force is 144 or so, and this value is 14.6. The effective labor force is 138, essentially, which is less than 144. So GDP is less than potential. Next, we're going to compute the unemployment rate and the cyclical unemployment rate. The unemployment rate is the size of the labor force, L3, minus the number of those people who are employed divided by the labor force. So the unemployment rate is 10.797. Copy that in Excel. The cyclical unemployment rate is the unemployment rate minus the natural rate. So we're going to copy this into Excel. When real GDP is less than potential, which is the case here, the unemployment rate is greater than the natural rate. And the cyclical unemployment rate is positive. When real GDP exceeds potential, the unemployment rate will be less than the natural rate, and the cyclical unemployment rate will be negative. When real GDP equals potential output, the unemployment rate is equal to the natural rate, and the cyclical unemployment rate is zero. Now we're going to check my work, and we should get everything correct. And we do.